In this webinar, we'll be taking a look at Biosec tools for navigating regulatory networks. I'm Peter Midford, a member of the Bioinformatics Research Group at SRI International. The Pathway Tools Regulatory Overview is a visual representation of a cell's transcriptional regulatory network and a tool for interrogating relationships within the network. As before, we'll start at the Biosec home. <laughs> I've already selected E. coli as our starting database. The Regulatory Overview page is available on the Genome menu under Regulatory Overview. It is grayed out. Your current organism doesn't have any gene regulation data and you'll need to select another database. Selecting Regulatory Overview brings up a diagram for displaying regulatory relations. The diagram itself consists of three concentric ovals of figures or icons, each representing a single gene in E. coli. The outer ring consists of genes that are subject to regulation, but themselves have no regulatory effect on other genes. The middle ring consists of genes that regulate other genes that are also subject to regulation. The inner ring contains the fraction, about 15%, of, regu of regulatory genes that regulate the most other genes. Besides the diagram, there are also a number of tools and the operations menu, which I will be toggling on and off throughout this webinar. There is a zoom control on the far left of the window, though I recommend using the mouse wheel for scrolling. At the top right, there is an opacity control. And the overlay legend window, which allows you to control the display of overlaid data. Near the bottom of the operations menu, the show legend command can pop up a legend that explains the shapes of the different icons representing the genes, as well as the arrangement of genes in different rings. Just a reminder that it's there if you need it. <clears throat> the outer ring is organized into groups of genes that are regulated by the same set of regulatory genes, sometimes referred to as multi-regulons. To include all the genes in some of these groups, the set is extended outward along a line that may lead to a triangle. Each gene in the triangle, each gene in the set will have, the, will have the same set of regulators, although the influence, positive versus negative, of particular regulators may differ. Each gene in the triangle will have the same set of regulators, although the influence positive versus negative of particular regulators may differ. A gene is shown as a plus if all its regulators activate it, as a minus if all its activators inhibit it, or as a circle if it has a mix of positive and negative activators. Ovals indicate that none of the genes have a known mode of regulation. Square icons indicate sigma factors. The icon representing each gene will put up a simple summary window when the mouse cursor rolls over it. Looking at a gene in the middle ring, we see that the rollover window includes the gene's name, the name of its product, ligands, the genes that regulate it, regulators, and those it regulates, called regulates. The pop-up will also list the members of the operon, if any, that the gene is a member of. Remember, genes in the outer ring don't regulate other genes, while genes in the middle oval both regulate and are regulated, and those in the inner oval regulate lots of other genes. But in addition to naming regulatory relations, the overview can visualize them. Let's start with mod E, a transcriptional regulator that uses a molybdate ion as its ligand. If I right-click on it, I get a pop-up menu with options for displaying and reporting the genes, the gene and its regular keys. The first option just highlights the gene itself, but there are also options to highlight or list its regular keys. If I choose to highlight the regular keys, the diagram overlays a pattern of 15 directed lines from mod E to genes in the outer oval and one in the inner oval. There are no genes that regulate mod E, so no display options for regulators appear in this genes menu. However, just because there are 16 lines in the overlay, don't assume that there are only 16 genes regulated by mod E. 
There are several ways to find all the genes regulated. One is to refer to the overlay legend, which lists each active overlay and its color. For each overlay, there is a button to list the genes in the set. And for this set, it lists 46 genes, not 16. So where are the other 30 genes? The answer to this lies in how gene groups in this diagram are organized. Here on the outer ring, I can zoom in on a group of five genes that are regulated by the same set of seven regulator genes that includes mod E. As shown at the bottom of this tooltip, all of these genes are in a single operon. I can zoom in and roll over one of these genes. The window includes a link to its gene page. Once on the gene page, I can use the operon tab to display the gene's operon diagram. So far, we have focused on the genes directly regulated by mod E. But because mod E regulates the, also regulates the regulatory gene NARL, there are indirect regulatories of mod E as well. I can add layers of indirectly regulated genes with the direct and indirect regulatories control, which has a widget for specifying the depth of layers. Depth zero is the direct regulators. If I change the depth to one, the overlay now includes the genes regulated, regulated by NAR-L and therefore indirectly regulated by mod E. If I open up the list of regula regulated genes, it now shows 152. If I add another layer, another 15 genes are added. Returning to mod E, I can also generate and download a report of all the genes regulated by this gene. I click right and select the print mod E T network to file. file appears and looks like this. Mod E is involved in regulating lots of genes. Let's take a look at a gene that doesn't regulate anything, isn't in a gene group, but is regulated by more than one gene. I'll start by clearing the existing highlighting. The gene I'll demonstrate is LUXS, which is involved in the production of the intercellular signaling compound autoinducer 2. I'll find the gene by highlighting it using the genes by name or frame ID command. I select the command, type in the name, and click highlight. The gene is highlighted near the top of the diagram. If I right click on the gene, I have the option of showing either direct regulators or both direct and indirect regulators. Unlike regular T's, there is no tool to control depth of the display of indirect regulation. So if you're interested in keeping direct and indirect regulation straight, I recommend selecting the option including indirect regulators first. So I'll select direct and indirect regulators. And I see a network involving multiple genes with three links converging on the LUXS gene. I can verify the direct regulators by locating the gene again. right-clicking and selecting the direct regulators, which will appear in a new color over the indirect regulator network. 
Because I selected the indirect network first, the direct regulation links are drawn in a higher layer than the indirect links and will always be drawn over them. If I had selected the direct network first, the direct links will be drawn over as members of the larger network. The diagram is rather complicated, but there is a way to simplify the presentation by changing the layout and removing genes that aren't in this subnetwork. To do this, I just need to choose Redisplay Highlighted Genes Only from the Operations menu. Now, two things have happened. First, only the genes in the network are displayed, but also the layout has changed from concentric ovals to a top-to-bottom layout of tiers or layers. At the top are the genes with the largest number of regulatory connections, the ones from the inner oval on the diagram. Working down are layers of genes that regulate fewer genes, while picking up more regulators above them. At the bottom is our gene Lux S, which we know has no regulatory effect on other genes. The top to bottom layout is available at any time, not just when only displaying highlighted genes. You can change the layout between top to bottom or nested ellipses with the change layout command on the operations menu. Note that if I clear all highlighting, neither the layout nor the set of genes displayed is changed. To get back to the starting point, you also need to use the command redisplay complete regulatory overview. We can also use terms from the gene ontology to select sets of genes whose products are annotated to a common gene ontology class. This allows us to see if genes with functionally related products share a regulatory network. I'll start with an example, lipid metabolism, which contains several disjoint regulatory networks. I'll start by selecting genes by gene ontology terms and start working down the hierarchy from biological process. I use the expand or plus button to open biological process. Then I'll open metabolic process and then primary metabolic process. And finally, I will select lipid metabolic process by clicking the checkbox instead of the expand button and then click on the Windows Highlight button. The Go term ID appears in the overlay legend, and we can see that multiple gene groups, at least 10 in the outer ring are involved, as well as several in the middle ring. The gene FADR seems to regulate most, but not all of this network. I'll clear the highlighting for a final example. Finally, it is always a good idea to check if your database of choice has enough regulatory interactions for the regulatory overview to be useful. I'll show you one way to do this from the dialog for choosing an organism database. I'll click on the Change Organism Database command at the right side of the web page title bar. This brings up a window with multiple panes, each pane providing a different mechanism for selecting a database. Yeah, there. The panes allow you to choose an organism by its name or by browsing through the taxonomic hierarchy by properties of the organism or whether there are metabolic models available. We want the third option, which will let us choose a property and choose the database related to that property. The top left of the pane is a dropdown, which lists all the properties that are available for filtering. The first nine characters, which start with the hash character, are counts of objects in the database, while the remainder are properties of the database or its organism. I'll choose the property count of transcriptional regulatory interactions. In the next dropdown, we can choose to filter on the presence or absence of a value or compare the value to a particular cutoff. So I will keep the has values selection in the second dropdown and then specify greater than and a value 50. Then I click on Find Organisms. Now the filter returns eight databases, each of which represents an organism with 50 or more transcriptional regulatory interactions known. I'll note that E. coli K12 MG1655 has over 5,000 interactions known for this string. If I select the database and click OK, it will load the selected database and take me to its summary page. 
That concludes this tour of the regulatory overview in Biopsych. We covered the layout of this overview, why genes are placed where they are, and how to find regulatory links finding both mouse rollovers and by displaying links. We also looked at the alternative top to bottom layout and how to use checkboxes in the layout legend to manage the complexity of the display. I hope you have found it useful. Thank you for watching.